This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. At Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. The world of 60s and 70s television. Welcome to Vast Wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. to some wonderful stuff. Don't you want to get into a conversation that you just can't get away from? What is this? Don't you... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we'll have none of this smut on this show. Get that thing off that camera right now. I want to see it over there right now. Get this thing over there. Come on. We're going to have none of that smut on this show. Actually, we were going to have some of this smut on the show because tonight it's sexy TV shows on Vast Wasteland. Ooh. We should say sexist. Anyways, before we get into the show, we want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, if you want to write into Vast Wasteland, you want to write into Box 15, 14, 11, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Yes, I'm sure you want to write in and complain about that opening. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe about the whole darn show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right in. Speaking of writing in, darn it, there's a letter, and I didn't even get to get it before we started this show. It's in the bag. Marty, would you mind getting it for me? Yes, I would. Okay, then I'll get it. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> I'll be right back. Excuse me a moment. I just have to unhook myself. But... Just kidding. Well, well we're still running. <laughs> Go ahead, Wilbur. And, and as he said, tonight's, tonight's topic will be sexy TV or sexist TV, but we're going to try to cover both as much as possible of, of both sides of the thing. We covered too much. That's the trouble. We yep. covered too much of one and not enough of the other. 
Oh, oh my goodness, this is a thick letter. It's a thick letter. Somebody spent some time. S. Scott from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Yeah, let me get this out here. And so S. Scott life in Reynoldsburg? from Reynoldsburg, Ohio, writes. Ooh, That's he writes very a lot, a lot, so and didn't neat. skip any lines either. <laughs> I bet you got real good grades on your penmanship. That's right. It's That's on recycled paper right. too. Let me let me get into the kind of the excerpts here. Well, dear Mark Wilbert and Marty, here we are. Uh, first of all. I'm writing to you to tell you how much I've enjoyed your two Trek shows. Just today, I finally had the chance to see the second. I do seem to miss the other shows since you're usually, uh, since you're usually aired when I'm out of my home. But for when I do have a Good. chance, that's when you go to his house. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thanks for that tip. For when I do have a chance, I enjoy them tremendously. And person goes on and on about Star Trek. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to find uh, find some points here. <laughs> It goes on and on and on and on about Star Trek, and really, we don't have time to read this whole letter here tonight. <laughs> but we thank you for the letter, and... Uh, it's the longest one we've ever got. It is. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, and for sending Oh, but this is important. Yes. Trekkies now would like to be called Trek Wars. Well, that, I, we, I've been hearing that for a while, though. <laughs> okay. I, I'll make a note of it. I like to be politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> and for sending the longest letter ever in the history of Vast Wasteland, you win... Absolutely nothing. Oh, I'll wave to you. Except the Scott. satisfaction of that that we <laughs> We're waving to you, S. Thanks a lot. We're all gonna read your letter. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, back to the show. <laughs> Sexy I'm finding this letter more interesting than the show. Probably. Has ever been. Probably. <laughs> Sexy, sexy and sexy or TV. and or sexist TV. <laughs> it's probably more gonna be more sexist because they um Somewhere in there, they just felt that the, the male audience watched more TV. That's the way I looked at it. I guess they think the male audience... I don't think no, it's much to watch more TV. I think it's more specialized. Who's controlling it? Who's controlling it? Who well, has the money? Well, I think, I think it's... Who was making the shows? I think, it's, I think it's more specialized than just male. I think it's... They figured out that the 14 to, like, 17-year-olds <laughs> were your big... 17-year-old males were like the big market for TV in the 70s. Well, well let's, let's Mainly because television in the 70s was just so dopey. We could probably <laughs> go back a, a bit further here to the, um, I can remember some, um, back when there used to be like uh, cigarette commercials and things like that on TV. Back in that era, there were the, um, the Noxzema shaving cream commercials right. with, Oh, well, before her, it was like some somebody foreign. Susan Anton was on. Well, there was, some, there was somebody foreign right. that was doing the sis boom ba Noxima, the take it off, take it all off. I can just remember this, this French voice, <laughs> French, some foreign voice, some European foreign right. voice saying, take it off, take it all off. And then they got into the into the da 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 music, and it's some guy shaving, you know. And right. And they figure you got you got the pretty woman there, you got the guy shaving. This is <laughs> you got all these boys out there waiting to hit puberty, so they can shave with a woman in the back. They can shave, and there'll be a pretty there. woman there, good playing. Yeah, the, had the had the little not, the reel to reel tape recorder playing, right? Because <laughs> they had bad speakers and things right. back then too. And so then you had your uh, your cigarette commercials with the uh, the Marlboro Man. Uh, Tom Selleck at one point was yeah, a Marlboro Man. Right. <laughs> he wasn't sexy. He was a cowboy. Well, see now this this is dirty. It's like it's not a whore. Guys, <laughs> some, somewhere in there, guys got the idea that women like this. Right. <laughs> Macho dudes on a stinking horse, smelling, smoking stinking cigarettes. Or the, well, this the, was the oh, 60s. Come on. The old, the old Spice Man. Yeah. <laughs> Sailor out at sea for several months with a bag of dirty laundry. Come home this guy's like sexy. Dirty <laughs> and he comes home smelling like the that sea, guy, and he's yeah. going to throw a bottle of the sea at you. And you, know, <laughs> and you wonder why uh, we had to have that whole little women's live incident. <laughs> <don't you>? Well... <laughs> Somewhere in there, somebody thought this was what women liked, so they... Well, they I don't, I don't think But then the guys, the guys said, well, if this is what the women like, we'll just have to buy this stuff, by golly. That's right. <laughs> we want you to smell like high karate and brute. Well, I, I got to say that I don't think it's just somebody. I think it's Fred Silverman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's somebody. Okay. No, not some faceless person. It's Fred Silverman who went to ABC and said, you know, I better we put some of those darn jiggle shows on. <laughs> We're talking big bucks because big darn ratings. Mm -hmm. Shows like Charlie's Angels. Charlie's <laughs> Angels. <laughs> Probably the definitive jiggle show. Because <laughs> she got... <laughs> More bounce per episode than any other. That's right. That That's right. 
<laughs> I mean, pretty much the whole the whole concept was you had you had the the faceless father figure guy on the uh, on the intercom, and you had three uh, well endowed women who would uh, uh, run around and uh, they'd supposedly be solving crimes, but that was really kind of incidental to the whole rest of the thing. <laughs> Fair as hair. Fair as hair, you know, the whole, the whole deal. <laughs> it was the hair, the swimsuits, the jumpsuits, whatever. And it, would, and it wouldn't be, you know, time, you know, we're, you know, going and checking out stuff on Wall Street. It was like, well, there's been these murders in the health spa, or there's been, you know, <laughs> there's some mystery there's, on the there's bodies, there's bodies <laughs> washing up on the beach, you know, yeah. so we've got to... So you got to go undercover, so... <laughs> And where mm. where did they come from originally? Anyway, did they just they just go out to the beach and and pick them out, or were they working in the stino pool? You know, well, well, I, did, well, the, well the, I think the first season they actually uh, each season they really explained that in the opening. Remember, they had the uh, I think Farrah was like a police woman or something. I think they were all police women or some sort of deal. One was like a photographer, which is your standard uh, standard I'd say sexist. Uh, Female job <laughs> is 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 the photographer. It seemed like a lot of females on TV shows in the 70s were photographers. Photographers, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, and one played tennis. That's right. Another one was a tennis player. That's right. <laughs> hey, baby, you look good in that short little skirt. I bet you could solve crime. Too. That's right. <laughs> You that sure can, me it, you can figure out where those tennis Charlie balls come from. <laughs> you can solve a crime. Charlie was trying to figure out, you know, it's like the main prerequisite. <laughs> hmm. Charlie just got all this money and he just he just picked him out. He's like the Howard Hughes area. Right. Has cameras all over the place. Whoop, there's one. Yeah. Let's get her. And, and then when they had to change the people, you know, it's like he's he's got that big camera in the sky. He's looking. Whoop, there's, there's another, another one. one. Get that one. Oh, get her. <laughs> So it was like by the end of it, they had well, how many? Were there six? There were, angels? according to this, there were six. That's correct. You had Sabrina, Jill, and Kelly from the first season, and then Chris uh, replaced Kelly, I believe. No, Chris replaced Jill, and then Tiffany replaced somebody, and then Julie replaced somebody. <laughs> you kind of lose track of it at so that it's point. It's like you if you have a if you have a Charlie's Angel reunion, they'll they'll all be fighting over right. <laughs> Who looks the best? You know yeah. who's got the. Those more plastic surgery right. in one room than in Exactly. Room. Really? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And don't don't let it be in an airplane because they'll all explode. You know? right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I can I can actually remember. Um, you can actually remember. <laughs> I can actually remember. Wow. It's a, it's difficult. Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. I can remember. Um, Sexy TV shows from from the 60s. We're oh, talking yeah. about um, things like oh, no. Dean Martin presents the Gold Diggers. <laughs> and and now talk about your first one. No, talk about the very very first one, Wilbert. Sherry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Sherry Lewis. What a babe. Yeah, that, <laughs> my golly, that's Sherry Lewis. I'll we'll move right from Sherry Lewis to <laughs> Julie Newmar. <laughs> <laughs> and from and there, the thing with those sock cat. puppets, hmm. apparently. And then, <laughs> then the thing, the thing that even the networks thought was just too darn sexy for prime time, um, the I Dream a Genie thing. We can't show that name. Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> People will just go insane. Hey, yeah. There'll be riots. <laughs> <laughs> TVs will be going out the window. My right. gosh, it'll be awful. <laughs> and then let's see. There's um. Well, I guess we can look at like Sonny and Cher as 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 well. Cher would get into these different costumes. That's they used to glue them on her. See those Bob Mackie originals. Oh yeah, they would just glue those like on and Lee press on <laughs> bra. <laughs> 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 And then there's speaking of speaking of such things, there's laughing, talking about painted on things, the 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 da, da, Goldie Hawn and, and, and who da, else? Um, da, 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 Judy Carn and would do the uh, Chelsea the Brown. Chelsea Brown. Uh, what's her name? Who played Christy Love? What was it? Her, Teresa Teresa Graves. Brewer Graves Graves Brewer? No, Teresa Graves. Teresa Graves. Teresa Brewer. Somebody else altogether. Yeah, Teresa Who's Graves. Right? They would. Um, and then her show, that get Christy Love for all that matter. I mean, this is before Charlie's Angels, but yet she's a she's playing a jiggle cop. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <Jiggle> cop. <laughs> the That's show they never actually put on jiggle cop. Jiggle cop. <laughs> in, in, in color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can remember only one that had something for. 
both sexes to watch. Yeah. WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah, oh yeah. The very beautiful Lonnie Anderson That's there right. playing the jiggle. But thank goodness <laughs> for the tight blue jean behind of Gary Sandy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which 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 just I don't know, maybe it's the timing of the show when it came on and 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 the state of blue jeans it. at the time. <laughs> and I know I wasn't the only one out there that appreciated yeah. it. <laughs> well, darn it, tell that story. <laughs> well, by golly. There was a breakfast. <laughs> yeah. There, there was back back in the days of the um, the weekly breakfast clubs that a certain radio station would would do. Um, Gary Sandy as was appearing as the guest at one of them and um, a friend of mine at school found out later that um, Gary Sandy was going to be at this breakfast club and by golly she took her books and she about beat me to death saying you mean I could this was years ago this is almost this is heading into t a good 10 15 15 I'd say good 15 yeah. years ago and if I mention it now she'll still be after me with whatever she can get a hold of you mean I could have seen her? But anyway, well... Hey, they had to look good live as good as they looked on videotape. But it's like, this, this, is, this is programming we're missing now. Yes, that's true. Nobody else wears... I mean, you might get lucky once in a while and Phil, Sally, or Geraldo will have the Chippendales on, but... <laughs> don't 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 turn it on and catch them when they've got the Chunkendales oh, on. <laughs> or, or the Blobendales. <laughs> no! Oh. Like a puke TV. <laughs> Big Lee Whipperman in the boy. Daddy, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Whoa, have bad memories. Yeah. You don't want me to flash back right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, when you're talking uh, your your male uh, sex symbols, you got you got Magnum. You got uh, well, I don't know. That seems to be popular. Uh, <laughs> Lee Horsley. Lee Horsley. <laughs> that was the one I was trying to think of. <laughs> now, see, this, this once again, this is um, guys looking at what they think that guy, what women right. would want to see. We really don't they know. Just come to me. And they yeah. just, I'll tell them. <laughs> we they, want tight blue jeans. <laughs> well, well, who else? We want tight blue well, jeans. Well, not names. <laughs> we want names. <laughs> If you want to audition for television, just wear some tight blue jeans and parade it past me. I'll tell you if you got what it takes. We're not going to watch shows that we're on here. Mm -hmm. Shows that we're on. Where are the Tony ready? Orlando was smooth. Tony Orlando. Tony Orlando was smooth. Freddie Prinze was very cute. <laughs> Later on, Stoney Jackson. He looked good, but he's done something. <laughs> yeah, Stoney Jackson's kind of going the, the Michael Jackson route somewhere along I'm there. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's what happened because he didn't look the same. <laughs> Now the chips guys were pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I would say that that was a pretty nice. Oh yeah, you're Eric, Oh yeah, I remember there. there was the Eric Estrada Eric posters. Eric Estrada. Yeah, Erica was real big. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Estrada. Erica. Eric Estrada. <laughs> the guy that played John. Um, what is his name? The All American boy. What is his name, John? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, look it up. Guy with the <laughs> I, 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 okay. I just kind of think his Michael name was Dorn John. Was on the show. Yeah, that's right. And Michael Dorn is actually good looking. When he Larry Wilcox. Larry Wilcox, okay. Larry Wilcox, Eric Estrada, Michael Dorn. I mean, they kind of had a variety pack there. That was that, and, and they were on motorcycles, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> and then if we're going to talk about um. Vehicular shows, which I guess we are here. We've got to mention the the Dookie Boys. Yeah, Dukes the Dukes Dukes Hazard. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was yet another show that had something for everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy, we got cars. <laughs> we got half naked women. Yep. And we got dumb men. <laughs> dumb men who can drive a car. Yep. They, they never figured out that they were. They just though. never figured out there were doors on that car yeah. either, did they? <laughs> <laughs> Heck, we got to go in through this open window. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's here for. Or maybe it, maybe it was a stock car and it just didn't really have doors. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's the deal. Maybe they have doors. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Can't figure it out. All, out. They're all cousins. They're all running around together. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Uncle figure that out. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Sheriff Nephew's after us. We've got, we got to get out of here. <laughs> Mm. And Grandpa Deputy. <laughs> Grandpa Deputy. <laughs> oh my! So. Oh God. Well, I guess that's our comment on um that. 
Ah. But didn't Burt Reynolds become like a major sex symbol because of his show? Um, well, which really... one of his shows? Yeah, there was a lot of them there. The first one. Uh, Seamus? <laughs> no. TV was show. Seamus his first show? No, it was that other one where he was the Indian. Um, well, yeah, let's see. Said the Indian. She yeah. remembers. Yeah. The crew remembers. She was there. She was there. I probably wasn't. <laughs> well, see, this is he built his. I mean, because he was popular before he started making movies. Yeah, but he, he was. He was already known with that. Okay. Um. Well, let's see. They got Riverboat listed down here. Gunsmoke, Hawk. Hawk. Or Dan August. Which one? Dan August Dan or Hawk? Dan August is what I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah. But Hawk was the one who really got him on the map, I think. Yeah. Well, of course, he was on, he was on Gunsmoke for a while, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he was. He was Quint yeah. Asper. Yeah, that's the deal. That That's the one that really got him up there. Yeah. They got him roles like his own Well, show. I, I thought that Seamus was a TV show. You mean it was just a movie? Apparently. It's just a movie. Well, gee, here we are. I don't know. I'm not like a big, huge Burt Reynolds fan. <laughs> I never was either, just really. He's one of the first kind of like TV sex symbol guys I remember hearing people talk about. You know, ooh, look at him, ooh, ooh, look at him. Ooh. I suppose if we're going to talk the uh, the TV sex, so we'll, we'll have to mention probably Chad Everett also, because <laughs> he, he was long one that just hey, went, went crazy Chad. for a long time there. That Chad Everett. He showed up at like the 1974, 75, something like that, prom at Lebanon, at where I went to high school. He like showed up at the prom. <laughs> Any particular reason he was just driving through town, or what was that? I don't know. I think the prom was in Dayton or something, because, God, you can't have a prom in Lebanon if anybody's ever been to Lebanon, Ohio. <laughs> and, uh, I happened to be staying with someone whose sister was a teacher, so she was chaperoning the whole thing and came home so very excited. Dad Everett was at the prom! And we went like, so? <laughs> yeah. So we were freshmen, and we just weren't that impressed. Mm, can't, can't forget G Gil Gerard, but... <laughs> Gil Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> is that his bitty, bitty, bitty. son now on TV, or is that a Good clone? Luck, luck. <laughs> on what show? Well, you see him in commercials and whatnot. He has a son who looks very much like him. Mm. Well, I know he's doing that. He's doing a show now, but... Was it a son or was it a clone? <laughs> we all know. I mean, oh. I mean, Gil is doing a show. Lee Majors. <laughs> oh, Lee Majors. And now this next, you like this what? summer, I'm he's gonna worried. have a new. They're talking more about guys than they are talking about women. <laughs> well, we'll <laughs> I don't get right back to that in a moment. We've mentioned the women. We're trying, we're trying to hit both sides of the spectrum right. here. Uh -huh. so can, but see, uh -huh. these are still, these are still guys that we've heard women talk about, even if right. it's just one woman. But <laughs> they, they've, they've talked about these now, guys. <laughs> now, if I remember correctly, this summer there's gonna be a new show or like. Like this fall is going to be a show. Lee is finally going to be playing a the wacky kick. sidekick. In fact, the old fat wacky sidekick. In fact, by the time this the time this show airs, that show will have been on probably several on times, and on and but, and gone. But right now, <laughs> it's it's premiering tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow will be the first one of this new show. We don't know what it's called. Um, we don't want to we don't um, want to advertise it as it were. Tomorrow will be like uh, twenty thousand yesterday oh, by the time this gets on. Raven, so. that's that's what it's called anyway. Is it Raven? Yeah. Is he on that? Oh, okay. Raven. What about that John Travolta? <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, that John Travolta. Talk oh, about your, your epitome of um, stupid. guys who were like uh, stupid, you know? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Man, you know, huh? real cute, but really dumb. <laughs> at, least, at least somebody thought he was cute or something, you know, but he was, he I just sure always looked at him as, as kind of dumb. He sure thought he was cute. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was cute himself, that's true. That's, that's all that he needed. <laughs> And that just got his whole thing rolling there. Well, you got when you get into the heroes and heroines like Lee Majors, Six Million Dollar Man, you got to talk about Linda Carter, Wonder Woman. Oh yes. <laughs> but oh yes. I'd rather talk about. <laughs> well, I, I, I mentioned I mentioned um, Julie Newmar. <laughs> I know I mentioned that. If I didn't mention it, I meant to. I meant it to again. mention it right after Sherry Lewis. I've heard a lot about Julie Newmar. <laughs> 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 yes, she was. She was Catwoman. And, and as far what, as he's concerned, Eartha Kitt did not exist. <laughs> well, Eartha Kitt had the voice for Catwoman, but, but, and but and Lee Merriweather, she was like in the movie, and then she was on the series right. a few times. But yeah. Julie Newmar was the more the more excellent Catwoman, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think recently, was one of the talk shows, all three, all three of them were on Whoa, one of the talk shows. I missed. No. They have a cat fight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see, that's I, I like Julie Newmar's suit a whole lot better than I like, say, um, 
Michelle Pfeiffer's suit in the movie. Oh, you did, huh? Because I, I, I just didn't like the... Because what was in Julie Newmark's suit. Well, no, I thought it, 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 was, it was more... Because was more than what was in Michelle Pfeiffer's suit. It was, yeah. it was more stylish. It was just a more stylish suit. It, it didn't look out like she just put it together herself when she was upset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> upset. That's that. I guess you could use that Not word. Upset. Yeah. <laughs> Which is basically what Michelle Pfeiffer does in this. She takes an old coat and well, she's upset. Did. Just tell us the yeah. whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> Warner Brothers will be on our back saying, "Hey." Funny, I heard they spray painted that suit on her. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'm so upset. Let me get some spray paint. Yeah. Now all five or six people who watch the show will know something about the oh, movie. <laughs> she's, she's upset. <laughs> They haven't seen it by now. That's right. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> and well, and then you got to go past uh, Wonder Woman to go to Partners in Crime. Yes. It was on. What was this? Actually, this is an '80s show with, with Linda not Carter. only Linda Carter but Lonnie Anderson, who and, later goes on to marry Burt Reynolds. But right. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and and I, if I remember, that show was basically them trading wisecracks and wearing glamorous gowns. That was most of it. Yeah, because because they had they found out they had that's right. They found out they had each been married to the same guy. Right. Wasn't at the same time. Right. Even? No, it was it was at different times. Okay. And then the guy dies, and wills this uh, this dete his detective agency to him. To them. To them. <laughs> to both of them. Yeah. Well, I need to know something. Yeah. How come on TV now we're like supposed to believe that like. What's his name? Major Dad is like a sexy hunk guy that somebody would want to marry, but his wife in real life, Delta Burke, isn't. What? <laughs> okay, what's his name? Joe McCraney? Gerald. Gerald. Gerald McCraney. Yeah. yeah. Okay, like, he's, he's got no hair. Yep. Yeah. He ain't really attractive, but they're trying to pass him off as he's an attractive man. Yes, they are on Major Dad's okay. show. Okay. Yet Delta Burke can't get a job because oh she's got a job she gained some weight yeah she had to go blonde too well yeah <laughs> like oh you have to go blonde and be stupid so 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 so, so I just want to know why we have to believe that why can a leading man be old and bald and ugly looking because because even today men control television <laughs> that's pretty much what it boils down yeah. to because it was it was probably the guys. Who got um, Delta Burke kicked off of uh, designing women in the first yeah. place? It was, I think, it was a combination. Though it was the guys, and then some women also got upset. But those are the, the little, the little women. <laughs> the little women. <laughs> the little women who are behind the guys yeah. that are controlling the TV. Little women. Well, they were. <laughs> the little women, you know. Yeah. The, you're, you're little women with big heads. <laughs> because they're, they're still emulating that. That's sad. Well, we, we certainly good. can't get out of here without talking about Three's Company. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <Welcome>. too bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like my friend, everybody thought he was really sick because he found Joyce DeWitt much more attractive than Suzanne Somers. Okay. And I know he suffered very much during high school because of the ridiculous that he faced being put down constantly. And having his very manhood question, why? <laughs> well, it's because um, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe he knew he knew that Suzanne Summers would have to bed. <laughs> what? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> Let's check, maybe, maybe just let's check with Dave in the booth. Did he actually hear that? We don't know. Maybe he just knew about her little problem. <laughs> and he knew that Joyce Dorn had done a... Um, Oh no, I'm thinking Cindy Williams now there, excuse me. No, okay. no. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, I was, I was thinking of Cindy Woman, Cindy Williams' Williams. part in the uh, the first nudie musical, but that's, that's Cindy Williams, that's not Joyce that's DeWitt. Joyce no, DeWitt. it's not. Although they, they probably, um, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Getting into dangerous gay? material here. Uh, where they had, okay, they had John Ritter posing as a gay guy. I wonder if any gay men actually found John Ritter attractive. Well, it, it seemed to happen on the Here's show the a lot. <laughs> That was always a bit on the show. The yeah. <laughs> and I think Mr. Roper was just um, well questioning his own manhood because he had kept putting John Ritter down, the John Ritter character down. I think that was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they really thought about psychology on that show? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I think yeah. psychology right. was Norman degree. Fell sitting around. What is my motivation in this scene? <laughs> I think it was. I think that was the farthest thing from their minds. In fact, um, we can look at. <laughs> 
We can look at uh, um, another one from way back there, um, the Gilligan's Island thing, Ooh. the Ginger and Marianne thing, you know. Right. Marianne was always wearing the little halter top, yet Ginger was supposed to be the sexy, glamorous one. And, mm -hmm. and, and yet of course, there was no reference to... And who do we have on that show? <laughs> the professor, maybe? Uh, and the professor, he he just would rather he would rather read books. <laughs> yeah, that's I don't right. Know. Are there any Gilligan groupies out there? <laughs> yeah. And on that note, we gotta get out of here. Next time on Vast Wasteland, it's miscellaneous cartoon shows. We'll see what the heck that means. Tune in next time. Bye, -bye everybody. <laughs>